Hey everybody, Todd Dammit Kearns here. Welcome to another episode of Todd Dammit Kearns Talks to His Friends. This time brought to you by my sweet dear friends at Prestige Guitars. Today, I'm going to talk to a very good friend of mine who I've been playing with off and on the past couple years in Las Vegas' Raiding the Rock Vault. Uh, but he was plucked out of a little tiny village in the middle of England by the late, great Ronnie James Dio and brought over to the United States to be his guitar player. Chosen out of a million different guitar players. That's how amazing this guy is. I love him to death. His name is Rowan Robertson. All right, all right, all right. Rowan Robertson calling from the, the great beyond. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm currently in orbit. I can see that. It looks like I'm, I'm not sure what we're looking at. Is that is that like Russia behind us? What are we? I, yeah, um, yeah, I'm not it, sure, actually. Is that your I mean, I'm not sure if it's Europe. I'm just the weird angle of it all. That's amazing. Well, I, yeah, yeah. It, it looks cold out there. It is cold up here. Yeah. It's Rowan's a star here, but... man. <laughs> Love it. So how you been? You've been good? You've been good? Keeping well yeah. during all this? Playing a lot of guitar, yeah. probably? Yeah, playing loads of guitar. Playing loads of guitar. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so yeah. I usually start with how we met, which was all based around the Las Vegas show, Raiding the Rock yeah. Vault here, where right. yourself yeah. and Howard Lease from Heart and a whole cast of characters played. We play together. Paul Shotino, Robin McCauley, Blas Elias from Slaughter. And yourself and I just sort of like, sort of slid slid in to kind of sit in with you guys, and and we became fast friends. I don't know how fast yes. we are, but you're yes. you're fast this way. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, no, I've always been fascinated by your story because, of course, you know, you 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 grew up. You were born. Where were you born? That'd be actually a great place to start. In Bedford, in England. Okay, and is that where you grew up, pretty much? Um, yeah, to like six, and then I went to Cambridge. Okay. Now, so, so when, when was your sort of first love affair with music and rock and roll and all that? Like even, even before oh. you picked up a guitar, like what was the, what was the band that kind of, or bands that made you kind of really get turned um, on to music? Well, a Be Beatles, because my parents had all the Beatles albums. Sure. Yeah. And I loved them. And then um, he, my dad bought me a Jimi Hendrix tape. Uh -huh. And then, funny, I was listening this morning to the first two albums that got me into hard rock, which was ACDC, If You Want Blood, and Deep Purple, Live in London. Wow, yeah. And those I are good. Just, That's a good place to start, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, really, really good, yeah. And yeah. so, at what point from there did you find yourself going, uh, I want to play guitar, or, or whatever? Oh, uh, actually, I actually picked up the guitar at a very young age. Oh, um, you did? Yeah, I picked it up, like, probably, like, I don't know, like five or something. I was just, a, just there really? was an acoustic at the house, yeah. And, and I just got some lessons off of a family friend to play a couple of chords. And then really? my dad got, yeah, then my dad got me some folk guitar lessons, you know, Simon and Garfunkel kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, so just then, strumming around on, on yeah, standards of some yeah. sort, yeah. Yeah, and then, and then um, seeing, I got electric guitar probably like, I don't know, like 11 or something. Because of Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, that's that's when you yeah. started to kind of want to work up to the other, to what I call the dusty end of the guitar. Because I'm one of those guys that the, the bottom seven frets are just worn yeah. out and it's brand yeah. new all the way up. Yeah, um, Ingvay Malmsteen's is the other way around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and then that's once you kind of like stumble into that world of Jimi Hendrix and those kind of guys who are so much more ambitious and so much more athletic up there, you kind of go, okay, well now I want to get an electric. What, what was your first electric guitar? I'd be curious to know that. Oh, it was an Arbiter, like okay. a, little, a little cheap SG copy, you know. Okay, little, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the That's high fun. action and the little thin body and everything. Amazing. How long after yeah. that were you putting a band together or anything like that? Oh, um, I got into my first band probably about 15, 16. We used to play in pubs. And, and, yeah. That's the yeah, one good thing about yeah. the UK is that there's always pubs, you know, there's, always, well, there's pubs everywhere. Yeah. There's always some. Yeah. So you were like, just kids playing in pubs? Yeah, it was this like funk rock band called Indiscretion and we used to play at local pubs and the rock competition in Cambridge. Oh, wow. How old were you? Yeah. 
Uh, probably like 15, something like that. Okay, so quite young. Yeah. And, and it was yeah. funk? Like, like... Yeah, it was like, because at that time, I think that was, quite, that was the flavor. Do you remember Living Color came out? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And uh, yeah, there was definitely that mixture of funk and rock happening at that time. So uh, that Like, was... like uh, groups like um, Extreme and groups like that were sort of kind of trying to like work <laughs> funk into their thing. Uh, yeah, that's later on. That's oh, later was it like... On. That's more like... Yeah, that's probably like four years later or something. Okay, there you as go. I remember yeah. it. Yeah. You're, 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 yeah. You're, yeah we should... Was this already by this point, uh, obviously by that point, so had you stumbled into like hard rock and heavy metal and all that? Yeah. Um, with as, as I say, Deep Purple, ACDC, a friend of mine gave me a couple of albums as a kid. And I didn't think I'd like it because right. I'd never listened to it. And I was like, oh, that... That stuff, you know, with the kids with the t-shirts and the thing and, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. And now and you're in, like, in a relatively small town at this point, are you? Uh, Cambridge. Oh, okay. So Cambridge. Ca so, yeah, um, of, a, of a school of a thousand kids, there was only two, two of us that, two, maybe four of us that were into hard rock. Is that right? Wow. It's so yeah, funny, yeah. yeah. And then... And then by what point are you starting to get, because you know, we're already almost at that point where you're like starting to make your way over to, to uh, America. Because you were how old when you came to America? Yeah, totally. Um, 17. My God. 17. So, so what, yeah, is the, crazy, what is the chain of events from 15 playing pubs to uh, whatever, um, whatever the steps are with, with Ronnie James Dio and that, that whole thing, you know? It was, it was like just, um, just playing out around. of the blue. I read in Kerrang! or Metal Hammer that Craig Goldie wasn't with Dio anymore. And I was a big Steve Vai fan, and of course still am. Mm -hmm. um, and he got the gig with Zappa at like 17. And, That's right, yeah. And in my mind, it was like, I'm gonna be over it. I'm gonna be past it soon. I have to do this, I have to do, you know. <laughs> You're gonna be sort of past thing. your prime at like 17 years <laughs> <Yeah>, old. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, so I sent in an audition tape. So was that an audition, video. like an audio tape, like, or was it a video yeah. tape? Or okay, so just yeah, audio tape. Yeah, like had, a, had yeah, had a four track recorder, and so I put on last. What are the chances of him in the pile of tapes pulling out your tape, which was not like one has to consider there was probably a number of tapes much more local, considering it's Hollywood nineteen. What year is this? 88. Okay, yeah. So everybody yeah. in Hollywood was a shredding guitar player at this point. So the chances yeah. of him just going, how about you? Or you? You know, they're probably, he could have thrown yeah. a stone and hit guitar players. But the fact that he, yeah. whatever you did on that tape must have just been enough to uh, to really catch his attention. Yeah, I think I caught his like, ear, but... Yeah, Ronnie James Dio wasn't starting out like with it, and this was his first band. This is like well into his career by this point. So it's like, you're, you're talking about Vivian Campbell, uh, Craig Goldie, Rowan Robertson. So that's, those are some crazy shoes. Yeah, that's some crazy yeah. shoes. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's amazing. So how does uh, that go? Know, he, well, he wanted, a, he wanted an English guitar player, so that was in my favor. Really? Yeah. Why, why specifically yeah. English? Because uh, I guess he played with Blackmore and Naomi. Right, good point. Uh, and, good point. and then with Viv, he wanted Viv, and Viv's British. He's Northern Ireland. Northern Irish. Irish. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? Um, Oh, and it's not, not a lot of people know, but if Doug Aldrich hadn't have turned it down, I wouldn't have got a shot. Is that right? What a weird yeah. turn of events, ending up knowing Doug as well as we do, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. It's amazing so that's that... the reason I got an audition. That's great. So, so yeah. was there somebody that specifically, like, did you just randomly send in your tape to the post office box in the thing? Or did you have somebody you knew that sort of presented no, it to I, him? No, I sent it... I sent it to um, Columbia, was it not Columbia, uh, Power, what? anyway, I sent it to the record company in England uh, with a letter and they sent it back to me saying they weren't interested. So I, I sent it to the Dio fan club in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. That's so crazy. So now you're in Cambridge and the phone rings or did you get a... Literally, yeah. 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 It was like we were watching like Star Trek and having dinner. <laughs> I picked up the phone. <laughs> and you're 17 years old. You're, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to wrap your head around. It's hard for me to wrap my yeah. head around. I'm just kind of like, okay, so then you pick up the phone and it's like, hi, this is Ronnie James Dio or? No, it was, it was the scratchy line. Okay. So I knew it was international. Mm -hmm. And you're right, right like, away like, 
Yeah. yeah. And then an American accent goes, can you hold for Wendy Dio? Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So then Wendy gets on the line, Ronnie's yeah. wife and manager and, and what just sort of susses you out sort of. Yeah. She said, um, yeah, she said, how would you feel playing in front of 20,000 people? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, and I was, no, I was, I was like a really cocky kid. So I just go, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So you must have made, you must have made some serious strides um, just from a technical ability. I mean, you're an amazing guitar player. And I think, oh, thanks. you know, back then that was a world of, of very uh, pyro, you know, pyrotechnic, technic guitar playing going on. Like, mm. you know, mm. were you like, so guys like Steve I, that was your guy, guys like him? Well, my, his, my sort of electric guitar player started with Hendrix. Mm -hmm. And I worked out like Little Wing as a kid, you know, and, and um, uh, Wing Cries Mary, all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was having guitar lessons as well. And I was learning bits of classical, bits of folk. And um, after Hendrix, then it was like Brian May, Billy Gibbons, Angus Young, Gary Moore. Hmm. Um, and then Eatem and Smile came out. Right. Uh, yeah, obviously yeah. Eddie, Eddie mm -hmm. too. Eatem and Smile came out and I was like, sure. oh, this guy's like incredible. Yeah, so that, yeah, yeah. So it was at that point in it. So you were you were adept at tapping, whammy bar, all that stuff. You kind of went down that road. Yeah. So okay, now this is where it gets crazy because I'm like, you know, because it's one thing to be like I said, it's one thing to be from Nebraska and be flown to Los Angeles. At least it's you know it's it's the same continent and, and same country. But to go across the ocean, were your parents tripping? Like were they like? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, my dad, my dad, he's, he says, you know, to this day, he says, oh, I shouldn't have let you go at such a young age or whatever. But the, the, the truth is, it was such an amazing break. I mean, I wouldn't have never forgiven him for not letting me go. Of course. So, I mean, yeah. it's one of those things where that kind of opportunity, you just, you have to, you have to go. I think as a, as a parent yeah. myself, I'd be like, well, you have to chase that down, son. You know, yeah. I, I, and I suppose, so yeah. what do you, you, you basically grab what, your guitar? What guitar did you have at that point? I'm always curious about this kind of stuff. I had a Squire. Oh, okay. A Squire Strat with, that I did my Eddie Van Halen job with and did all the, you know, as was the sure, stickers yeah. all over it. And, sure, yeah. You know, uh, and uh, that was the guitar I had. And uh, yeah, I took it over, but then Larry Moran, do you know Larry Moran? Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was Ronnie's personal at the time. He picked okay. me up from the airport. And he goes, Funny. why are you playing that piece of crap for? Play this. And he let me play his Charvel, which I eventually bought off him. And that was the main guitar, Black Charvel. Yeah, I remember it well, yeah. And yeah. so that's so funny. So you literally, what, you grabbed a suitcase, your guitar, and you went to America. Yeah. And, and then, how, long, how long are you in America before you ever set foot on British soil? Well, I guess you, you know, I guess you wasn't that long. Well, when I got here, we went for the audition at the Alley. Do you remember the okay. Alley? Okay, yeah, 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 I remember that, yeah. And um, Ronnie said to me, he says, I really want this to work. I, you know, I really want this to work. And he was very supportive. And then I think some days after the audition, Larry said to me, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but you got the gig. Really? Oh, wow. No, I think I, I think I did two auditions. I did two auditions. And then so then they offered me the gig and I had to act like, oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, like oh. you didn't already know. Yeah. So right. where, what, they put you up at like the Sportsman's Lodge or something? Or no, what? I'd stayed on Larry Moran's couch. Oh, you did? Oh, wow. Really? That's so funny. Yeah. And it's just, and you're like, it's like Hollywood and yeah, it was swimming like, pools, movie stars, the whole thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, I didn't see that stuff yet, but no. um, it was like getting off, for me, it was like getting off the plane onto the set of the 18. <laughs> 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 that is the best analogy of America from the point of a 17 year old English kid. <laughs> yeah, totally. You're like, what? Yeah, that's so yeah, terrible. It was like surreal. I was like, oh, and I just had to stay. Yeah. I was driving, yeah, yeah. I was in Larry's car and I was like, there was the sun, the, you know, the golden sunset. And the, I was right. like, I have to stay. I can't go home. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so, so then how long? Okay, so you get the gig. Then it's like, what, into. Uh, rehearsal writing mode or where was where was Ronnie in in terms of like the album cycle mode time to get a new record together that kind of thing yeah okay. yeah and it's funny because we we I said to him 
I said to him, look, I said, I don't know if I can write. And he goes, trust me, you can, you're going to be fine. <laughs> like, Man, what, a, what an amazing Obi-Wan Kenobi type. Dude, totally. Uh, yeah, he's like, I mean, yeah, I've heard nothing but amazing things about the man. Yeah. I never, I never had the luck to, to meet him, but I, when you, mm. I, you've told me stories before, and it's just kind of like, I, I just when I hear that, I'm like, you literally just. He's like, I'll tell you when you're kind of stumble onto the right thing, or yeah, that, but this, but that, you know, that kind of thing. So, so were you yeah. basically just coming up with riffs, and he was like, yeah, and he was like, no, 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 no. Oh, what's that? You know, really, very interesting. Yeah. And we, we, we. Uh, played the songs in the auditions and then we came to do the writing and I go, can we play rainbow in the dark? And he goes, uh, no, 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 <laughs> can't play that again. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, we're in writing mode now. So yeah, was this, yeah. was this Jimmy Bain, uh, Vinny Appice still around? He, the, yeah. yeah. It was the original lineup. Yeah. Okay. For yeah. the first 10 months. Wow. What a, what a band to just land in too. Just like yeah, monstrous totally. players. Yeah. Yeah. That's really exciting. So, so then you're, 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 you're coming up with songs and I, I imagine is, is Jimmy and Vinny involved in the actual arranging as well, or is it mostly you and Ronnie? Oh no, it was, a, everything was written in the band room. Oh, okay. I see. And, I see. Everyone was there. Was Claude Schnell on keyboard still? Yeah. Okay. Wow. So you're like, it's, yeah. it's so funny to imagine like you're basically, you walk in and it's like Dio, the band. Yeah. It's like totally. Yeah. And then, okay, so then how long is it between that day that you arrive in Los Angeles till you're sitting in a recording studio? Which recording studio did you do that, actually? Um, Granny's house in Reno. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah. That's, that's interesting to consider. And I guess, I guess um, the reason we did it there, because I'm actually friends with a guy in town here called Bjorn, who was working in the studio at that time. Hmm. And um, he said that uh, they did the White Snake album in there, Really? And which which one? Coverdale, yeah, the one with Vi on it. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Slip of the tongue, I think it's called. Slip of the tongue. Yeah. And I think I think Vi did his parts in his own house, but they did the drums at Granny's house, and Coverdale recommended that studio to Ronnie. That's why we ended up there. Great! Yeah. Wow. And so, had you been in a recording studio prior to this? No. <laughs> that was all new to me. Yeah. It's just, it's like, it's, you're having that Mark Wahlberg, like rock star totally. movie moment. Like, yeah. totally and, and okay, so, so I, I find the whole thing kind of mildly overwhelming from the perspective of, of when I was 17. I just mm. think like, oh my gosh. I mean, it's amazing that yeah. you survived it in a funny way because a lot of people would go so far off the rails, Hollywood, you know, cocaine and just yeah, madness, totally, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. But, but you probably have solid parents who raised the, you seem like a very solid cat that way. You don't seem like you're, you know. Well, yeah, I think I was pretty sensible. And, and also Ronnie and Wendy sat me down and said at the sure. beginning, they said, don't touch cocaine. We will kill you if you touch cocaine. I would imagine they yeah. probably felt some sort of parental duty to some, you know, knowing some that degree. they, to taking your, you know, taking this kid off of his parents and gonna, did they have a conversation with your parents? Like, we're gonna, take care of them kind of thing or do you even, yeah you in fact when in fact when dad visited uh in visited early days that that i remember he spoke to ronnie about it and ronnie I'm, I'm sure was was uh you know saying to him like he's in good hands like don't worry sort of thing. i'm sure yeah so where were you living at this point you're like in hollywood or you're on the valley or um i got an apartment with eric gammons from cold sweat do you remember oh, cold yeah, sweat? I, the I do. yeah 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 so where was and, the apartment Somewhere at Sherman, Sherman Oaks, just okay, out Sherman of the Oaks, boulevard, yeah, yeah on yeah, like yeah. Van, Van Nuys and by the newsstand on Van Nuys. And uh, did Central. you have a driver's license at this point? I did get one pretty early on, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you got one when you got to America, you didn't have one in England? No, I didn't have one in England, though. No. Okay, so yeah, I, I remember it's, talking to you about that because you never really had the experience of driving on the other side of the road. You showed right. up, and this is what you drove just like the rest of us over here, I guess. Yeah, fascinating. Okay, so I, I'm sorry, I, I feel like I'm like it's like an interrogation kind of thing. Oh no, it's great. Cause yeah, I've, great, I've known great. you for so long and little bit, bits and pieces of this to me are, I sort of picked up along the way, but I find the whole thing so fascinating from your youth standpoint. And, and then like, so then you make the record that goes fairly, you know, since it's your first experience, it, it was, it went fairly smoothly for you. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The record went fine. Yeah. Really That's well. That's great. What a, what a great bunch of guys to be around too. Vinny's a, a solid cat. You know, and all those guys. And yeah, and by the time we made the record, it was a different 
different band, but right, that's completely right. different band. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it yeah. did it did shift yeah. on then, didn't it? Yeah. So yeah. then, when you um, then you go on the road. Uh, yeah. And yeah. and how how did that how did that was that experience like? So oh, you're it's going, killer. Oh, it's crazy. Killer. You've never really been on the road. All of a sudden, you're on a tour no. bus and 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 playing with like who? What kind of bands were you touring with? Like other than uh, we. Ingve Malmsteen supported us, which was crazy because he was one of my heroes. I love it. So he's he's playing before you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and he's twice your age and and and, and, I, and, a, and a living legend, you know. Totally. And I was like completely in awe. And I went up on stage in his sound check and I asked him if I could play his guitar. Amazing. And, and he's like, sure. And he hands me his guitar and I go, oh, this sounds exactly like a, a strap. What happened? <laughs> 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 yeah he's got one of those he's one of those guys where his fingers are part of the equation yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Totally. oh that's amazing dude so yeah. so you guys did an entire run with the with the around that period what i'm trying to think which version of Ingve's band that would be who was singing do yeah, you remember sure. oh god you know what I can't we, we know so many guys who were in that yeah that, that yeah. band but i i don't know there's been a lot of changes in that band yeah and, th and then we had warrior soul Okay, yeah, we're so on Corey, yeah. uh, uh, the singer okay. Corey, uh, yeah. Uh, um, we ha uh, Love Hate. Yeah, yeah. Jizzy's band, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jizzy's great. band. Uh, Cold Sweat supported us for a while. Um, we, did, we did these shows in Europe. We did two weeks with Metallica and Bonham. Wow. Which is killer, <laughs> which is awesome. Amazing, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and what, Jason's band was on before you guys, or you guys were... Uh, Jason's band was on for us. Yeah, we were so Metallica's special guests. Right, and that's I got a amazing. Funny, yeah, I got a funny memory of standing on stage and looking down and seeing all of Metallica standing watching, and doing Insane. they were doing they were doing um, comedy. As I remember, I think they were doing comedy Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> comedy Hitler. Make sure you make sure you preface it with comedy. Otherwise, they, they were doing Hitler. What? <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. No, I'm sure <laughs> That's amazing. Um, that's crazy. So again, you're you're on stage with you know it's like the son of John Bonham is playing and and yeah. Metallica who are gods. What tour were they yeah. on around that? That was on um, and Justice. And Justice for all. So they were like yeah. gigantic by that. Dude, point. it was insane. Yeah. The yeah. massive full arenas. I mean, pyro, just like I've never seen anything like it. it was so brilliant. crazy. And then incredible. So then like. Uh, and so you done you had done the US, Europe. Did you go to Japan? No. No, we just did America and Europe. Okay, wow. Yeah. So what's what how does that all wrap up from there? Like what is the next chapter as far as It's funny. We we have a mutual friend in Hugh McDonald. Of course. <laughs> Hugh McDonald and goes, Bon Jovi. And he goes, I said to him, he goes, So what happened after uh, what happened after after the Do tour you? you did with Ronnie? And I go <laughs> I go I go, he went back to Black Sabbath and he goes, you chased him back to Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> so you get credit or blame for that one way or the yeah, other. Totally. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's right. Yeah. So they went back and did a run of uh, uh, that, that. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. That's they crazy. did um, so, the yeah. De Dehumanizer album. Dehumanizer. Yeah, yeah. 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 Amazing. So then you're in Hollywood and you're like, well, do I go back to England or um, do I just kind of... Yeah, I decided to start a band. How long? Wait a second before I before I go any further. How yeah. many? How long is this from you arriving in LA till he goes back to Sabbath? Uh, I guess yeah, two years. Yeah, two years, big give or take. So yeah, a good, like a, a year, a year, yeah, maybe a year and a half. Year, Album a cycle. year of writing and yeah, yeah. And then so that so then what what's next? You decide I'm staying. You, did you have that moment of like, do I go home? <clears throat> well, uh, no, I never had that moment. I thought I wanted to start a band, and but I didn't get any auditions. Right. Didn't get any auditions. Right. Um, so I, I decided to start a band and then Wendy Dio also managed Only Logan. Okay, right. Yep. Lynch Mob. So I started yeah. a band with him. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That was, he, that was... he just came out of Lynch Mob. So and that took us about four years beginning to end. And the album got shelved. It never came out. I remember you saying that. Didn't you aren't you guys working on trying to release that now? Um, we're trying to get we, we've we've tried a few times to get rights to it, but okay. um, they they want a lot of money for it and right. and um, uh, or you know stuff like that. And then so I'm either I'm tr I'm actually trying to re-record it, which is nice. It's a really good album, and it would be nice to see if it came out. Like I remember you talking about that. So actually yeah. like retracking yeah. it. And, yeah, in and fact, getting it already 
In fact, I already did the drums with Coogan. Great. Scott Coogan. Scott Coogan from LA Guns and Ace Frehley, yeah. Yeah, who's amazing. And, yeah, he's great. Uh, and, uh, and Spencer Campbell, who's the most incredible bass player. You probably, I don't, you doubt that you're familiar with him because he's a Nashville guy. I remember played, the name, yeah. Yeah, he played with like Del McClinton, uh, the Judds. He's done like all these platinum albums. He's played of course, with Steel yeah. and mm -hmm. he's just an incredible bass player. So he's, he's doing the bass. Amazing. So did you yeah. remain, I mean, did, how, did your relationship with Ronnie and all that sort of remain friendly? It just kind of, uh, oh, yeah. he went off and yeah. did that. And what was his, oh, oh. I'm trying to think how that worked because they went off and did that Sabbath thing. I don't think it was a very long last thing, was it? Um, it it's funny. I remember him used to, <laughs> he used to, he, he used to, at that time, I guess he fell out with them and he used to call them backstabbeth. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> so, boy. Yeah. Um, There's anyway, always think, inner, bond, inner band drama like that, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, totally. But actually, when he died, Geezer Butler went to every hospital, uh, you know, hospital visit with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Geezer. I'm glad, they, him over. I'm glad they patched that up, yeah. Yeah, I don't that's... know anything about it. I just thought it was funny that he used to call him that. Yeah, you know? well, of course, yeah. When, when, yeah. when there's bad blood happening, that's what's going to happen for sure. Yeah. So what, what comes after the Oni Logan project? What was that project well, called, by the way? Um, Violet's Demise. Wow. Yeah, I really, I'm really excited that you're, you're actually trying to see that through. Thanks, man. That. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks. Well, after then, uh, it was, uh, that was sort of a bit of a, a bit of a dry period. Now, is this, career, is this, sorry to, to cut you off, right. is this like starting to be like, oh, it's grunge and guitar playing is not nearly as interesting to the general yeah, public? Yeah, it's exactly like, the time, yeah. In fact, during, during the end of the recording of Violet's Demise, I saw Teen Spirit on MTV. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh, this is killer, this is really good. Yeah. And, and a lot like, of people going, oh, no, it's not. Well, yeah, the, the guitar player is playing just the melody of the song for the solo, and you're like, yeah, that's kind of cool, you know. It's it was, cool. it became sort of like a a different, um, a totally different take on on that kind of guitar playing, and, and everything mm. became like it almost became because I was there too, you know. We mm. came up in in hard rock and and sort of like landed into that alternative world as well. But it was interesting to see like nobody cared that you could play real fast or real technical that became sort of like almost they, a detriment yeah they did yeah they did. yeah exactly yeah. it was detriment. Yeah. yeah yeah unless it was somehow you know I, I, but it was such a crazy time for anybody who would really woodshed like that you're like uh oh well, what do i do with my mm. with this thing so with my diploma yes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were still in hollywood or still in los angeles at this point and yeah. what's the next step after that you just kind of like well like i said it was that was probably about three years that were i would have to say quite difficult really as far as getting work you know mm -hmm. I, there was no professional i didn't get any professional work you know for, right. for a while and yeah. that lasted until so say from like 94 when uh, i didn't get a proper gig again till like 98 actually yeah. So it was like some years of just sort of figuring out how to sort of, yeah. you know, you know. Yeah. Um, but character you know, building, we call that. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I know. We all went. I mean, everybody's had dry spells in their career where, yeah. you know, where things just aren't. And I think that, and I think that that's actually a good lesson for anybody mm. paying attention is is that you know that there's going to be no matter what you do, things fall in and out of fashion all the time. And mm. even if even if you're even if you are in fashion, it doesn't mean that the you know that the uh, that the gods smile on you and at every turn and just these things kind of happen, but staying the mm. course like you have. And, and, and like you say, all these years later, still playing and, and, and making a living mm. with a guitar is, is, mm. is half the battle. So mm. what, around 98, what did you land in from there? Actually, it was a really cool band. Um, it was called Vast. Okay. V A S T. And it was this mm. guy, John Crosby from okay. Northern California. And he was, they thought he was going to be like the next Trent Reznor. Interesting. And he, yeah. And he had this album called, visual audio sensory theater huh. and it was like enigma meets metallica interesting so it was kind yeah. of a uh, so a bit more of a uh, uh industrial type idea like it programming was like, yeah there's programming mixed with live drums live guitars it's, it sounds um you know and he used to incorporate chants you know like a choir like eastern choirs and stuff very it interesting was, it was really really good album wow and um that i I recorded on the second album with that, and we uh, toured um, in Europe and the States a lot. And amazing, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that lasted that lasted like probably three years. Great, so that takes you into the two yeah. thousands, yeah. into the twenty first century. So, 
So what, uh, what is the, what is the turn of events that leads you from, you know, that whole thing into things like raiding the rock vault and being in Las Vegas, because that's home now, right? You're, you're yeah. local now. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well that actually came through Andrew Freeman. Right. Andrew yeah. was a friend, our good friend who, who's been playing with oddly enough in a full circle way, plays in a band with Vivian Campbell last yeah. in line, which was essentially, um, put together as a loving tribute to the memory of Ronnie James Dio with Vinnie mm -hmm. Apice and Jimmy mm -hmm. Bain, who unfortunately has passed mm -hmm. away as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's a really interesting turn of events that like, you know, this, this Dio thing just is always sort of there. How was yeah. your, how was your interaction with Ronnie uh, at the, towards the end of his life? Were you still sort of in contact or had you kind of lost track of each other? I hadn't been, hadn't been in close contact for quite some years, but. Right. Um, as will happen when you kind of, when, you know, hmm. time passes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I got in contact with him through email actually. And as I knew he wasn't well and, and we exchanged some very pleasant emails and. Oh, that's and awesome. To so hear. it was, yeah. Yeah. That's really awesome to hear. I mean, yeah. what, I mean, it says a lot about him as a character and the character of his being that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, like I said, he could have picked anybody. He could have picked anybody to play guitar. He was living in, in Los Angeles and there's guitar players everywhere around that time who, everybody who could play guitar like that all flocked to Los Angeles, but he, he mm. sort of saw something in you and, 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 you know, and, and basically created this whole career for you that, you know, mm. that really kind of oh, took yeah. you to, to America and beyond. Oh yeah. yeah. Every, yeah. every day, um, it, it, as you say, every single thing I've done ties back to that and it gave me everything. For that. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, um, yeah. but, uh, okay. So then, yeah. So then Andrew Freeman, who's, who was in the show for those that don't know raiding the rock vault is a, a a sort of classic rock show that we we have here in las vegas and we play everything the eagles the uh i'm losing track of all the tracks because we haven't done it in three months <laughs> <laughs> but again it's hugh mcdonald from bon jovi or or phil susan from uh, uh ozzy osbourne and uh, and all these different characters will come in and out all the time and 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 Rowan plays guitar on that. And it's one of those great things where, you know, when they go after guys, especially in, in this new age world, that post grunge world where it becomes kind of, uh, you know, it's this guy from Bon Jovi and that guy from Slaughter and that guy from this and Rowan from Dio. Having that little, that Dio card you're able to carry in your wallet every day is, is an amazing thing. Oh, I, don't, I carry it like this. I don't carry it in my wallet. I carry it like this. <laughs> like Wayne's World. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> go, to Target, go to Target, Walmart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <totally. laughs> yeah. Uh, No, I think it's an amazing thing. I, I think that's what's so exciting about your story is, is just like, um, you know, just, just how, how, what a, what a crazy journey it can be just sort of picking up a guitar. And had you not, had you not taken that, that chance of just seeing that address in Kerrang or Metal Hammer or whatever it was and just sort of going, I'm going to try yeah. that. Who knows what you would have yeah. done? You know, I assume yeah, you're, you're, you're so talented. I, I assume that something would have materialized in one, one form or another, but I think it's really, really, at least like, it's really exciting that you took that kind of chance. Cause I was from a little town in Canada and I honestly don't think I would have been quite that ambitious. I think I would have been like, why would they pick me? I think they'd probably pick some guy mm. literally. Well, I felt, yeah, I felt exactly the same way, and I decided I wasn't going to send the tape. Oh, really? But, so did you have moments yeah, but of if, like, eh. yeah? I just was checking it out, and I was like, oh no, what, 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 you know, what chance have I got? And a friend of mine said, absolutely not. You send it. It's like it's like you have nothing to lose, yeah. really. Yeah. Do you still yeah. have the tape? No. Oh man, wouldn't you love to have your hands yeah. on that? So what was it? Yeah, you just yeah. you just concocted some sort of instrumental thing. Um, I put last in line on track one of my four track and I played a solo to it on track two. Oh, interesting. That's really cool. And then, and then did some unaccompanied like shredding or whatever. Great. Great. That's, that's so yeah. exciting, dude. I mean, I, 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 I think yeah. it's really inspiring for, you know, for people to hear that, you know, that if you don't take those kind of chances, then things it's don't, true. things don't, don't happen. Yeah. Right? And, oh yeah. I mean, if you, yeah. And definitely, I think that's, and, 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 and like I said, you, you've been able to turn a career, a career out of playing guitar for the rest of your life. And that's, that's, that's exciting. And I, uh, mm, I commend you great, on yeah. that, sir. Thank you. Thank that's you very amazing. much. That's amazing. 
Well, it's really I nice of you to have me on, man. I won't keep you much lo longer because I know how cold oh, it is. That's great. It's, <laughs> it's freezing. It's freezing. <laughs> <I know. laughs> so yeah, during the quarantine, you've been uh, doing the online guitar lessons and all that kind of fun stuff, keeping busy. Yeah, and and I've got I've got a, a new project actually with uh, you, who a drummer who you know, Les Warner. Of course, another uh, yeah, uh, ex another Pat Englishman. Yeah, and we've Where? got we've set up a studio. We've set up a studio at his house. He's in Henderson. Yeah. So we've got, we can do drums there. And then, uh, and we've already got two songs. We've got one in the, in the bag, which is being mixed at the moment. So Hooray. we'll get that out soon. And we've got a really good singer on it. So that's, that's going to be good. Who's singing? And then, well, actually, it's a guy in another country and he's got a couple of projects. And I should probably ask him before I start shouting his sure. name around in case he wants to what, put it on as a, as a. What country are we talking about? Actually, he's from India. Really? Fascinating. Yeah. Wow. This yeah. is really, it's the coolest thing about the internet. And I've learned so much about this during the quarantine, having a, you know, access to, to recording equipment in your home. Yeah. You, I'm getting stuff sent to me all the time and I'm like, yeah, that sounds like fun. And a lot of it, I've been trying to brush up my chops, just doing stuff yeah. playing and you're yeah. playing recordings with people. You, that was not a possibility. Not that long no. ago, the idea of recording exactly. with somebody from India would just be like, what are you talking about? Yeah. You got to take your like, your cassette tapes and, or, or like two inch tapes and mail them to like Mumbai or wherever the hell he is. Yeah, that's totally. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah. really exciting. Wow. Well, good for you. Yeah. I mean, I, I also think it's really important to have, you know, even when we're doing these fun Las Vegas shows and which, you know, it's not like the Raiding the Rock Vault is just like this fun thing we do. It's a big, huge moving parts going on in a, a Las Vegas show, you know? So it's, it's good to be doing something creative as well. And I think yeah. you, you should yeah. always be scratching that itch for sure. For sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. I, I, oh. I've, I've been really wanting to reach out anyway, because you, you and I get along. So I mean, that's the one thing about like, when you're hanging in a group, like uh, any sort of group of people, like a rock band or, or whatever, you find your like-minded people who like a laugh. And you and I are always on the side joking about something stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure definitely. people are like, what the hell's going on over there? Those, those <laughs> giggling, yeah. silly people yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, hopefully we'll be on stage together soon, brother. Thanks, brother. Thanks yeah. for having me on. Good to see you, man. Awesome. You really too. appreciate it. You too. Take care. We'll see you very soon, all right? Cheers, Todd. See ya. Big love.